can see just absolutely shoulder to shoulder and spilling out across Toronto, downtown Toronto. Very exciting day, James, for, uh, for fans and really just the country, I think, has really been galvanized from the victory of the Toronto Raptors. Welcome back to our coverage. I'm Lisa Laflamme with uh, James Duffy, and we are so thrilled to be bringing you such good news today uh, from downtown, to a sunny downtown Toronto. Yes, if you're just joining us, if you're playing hooky from work or from school for a few minutes, uh, the parade has been progressing slowly. It got underway about an hour late, but there's super fan Nav Batchi at the bottom of your screen uh, leading the way, the honorary Grand Marshal as the Toronto Raptors, the NBA champions, make their way through the streets of Toronto towards Nathan Phillips Square, Look at where this. there is about 30 to 35,000 people awaiting them for the rally that will be, again, something that Toronto has been waiting for a long time and something Toronto's never seen. And again, these uh, crowds are spilling out into all of the streets, every building uh, giving over their balconies to fans. Employers were asked by the mayor of Toronto, ah, give your staff a break. Let them go out and watch the parade for little did we know that it, the parade would be, as you say, James, more of a tailgate party, but it really is spectacular, and I think Pooja is right down there in the middle somewhere. So, can we talk a little bit about the dedication of the fans here, because they are patiently waiting for the parade to end and for the party to start here with a rally, of course, and as you look out at all the red, the black, the purple, you see a lot of people with championship gear and what that means is it's the dedication, right? Whether it was lining up to get into Jurassic Park or lining up to get the gear or lining up to get your spot here so that you can get close to all of the players to be able to welcome them home and the ownership and to be able to get really close to that Larry O'Brien trophy. I mean, it really is dedication and I've been talking to some of the people here, some of the fans, and it's not just Greater Toronto Area, as you know, it's people from across the province. I've talked to people from Montreal. We know that this is not only something that has brought people from across the nation, but around the world, whether it's the Philippines, England, Australia, people wanted to be here to support this team. And, uh, you know, as we look out and we talk to some of the people here, they are excited, they're waiting. At times, even though it's still the AM, it feels like we are at a rave. They're jumping up and down, they're hyped up, they're so excited, and then at other times, as soon as on that screen they see a player, it's pin drop silence as everybody wants to hear what the players have to say. So you can only imagine what is going to happen when that parade comes to an end here at Nathan Phillips Square and this crowd erupts. Talk about the biggest party that you have ever seen in Toronto, in Canada, and really talk about a really great welcome home to all of our players. Back to you. All right, thank you, Pooja. It, it's so true. As as this as they started to win series after series, oh, these wow, are construction workers on scaffolds <laughs> that watching is, the parade. That is an opportunity right there. You know, don't you don't have to work, but you've got a great today. view. But there was, you know, as people started to imagine, Lisa, what it would be like, so can you imagine if they actually win the championship, what this would be like? And now we're finally seeing it, and it's somewhat surreal with, I think it's fair to say now, in the millions of people down here, and it, look, it's so hard to estimate crowds. I can tell you that officially the Chicago Cubs World Series victory in 2016 is officially listed as the largest professional sports celebration crowd in North America with five million people. Obviously the Yankees, the Red Sox have had big ones. And I don't know who will put a number on this one, but you have to think that it's in the ballpark anyway. It's so hard to guess, but look at, we've got pipe bands here and with the super fan making their way slowly to Nathan Phillips Square. But you know, James, I was really surprised to see today the, the celebration had, did start after that victory on Thursday night. But already there have been meetings with the players and the coach. Uh, even last night, he said he was meeting with up to seven players to sort of talk about the future. So there really is no rest for these guys. No, they, do, they don't wait long in professional sports because they also know that probably once this parade is over, these guys are gone and in off season. So exit meetings with a lot of positives to say to all the players. I think the other thing about this, and one of the reasons these Raptors are so special is, and 
find at the Ringer uh, sports website called them the unlikeliest NBA, NBA champions ever because this entire last couple of decades in the NBA has all been super teams from Shaq and Kobe and the Lakers and LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and the Heat and San Antonio had a bunch of stars. And now you have a Raptors team with zero lottery picks on the roster and only two of the top seven drafted or developed by the Raptors. Pascal Siakam, the 27th overall pick in the first round and Fred Van Vliet, who nobody wanted. Nobody drafted Fred Van Vliet. They signed him, developed him, and and so it, it's it's such an unlikely cast. Of course, Kawhi makes the huge difference when they pull him in. And again, I think just another factor that makes the city and this country love this team so much. And they, they are really incredible ambassadors too. Every single time they're in front of cameras, every single team member. It, it really is just so inspiring to listen to them um, and their focus on this sport, their love of family, and their love of fans. You know, this is such a thrill, not just for the players, but everybody in the organization and sometimes the people in our business. Matt Devlin, who's been the voice of the Raptors, gets to call his first NBA championship. He's with Gurdini. Thanks very much, James. Yes, here with Matty D. Oh, boy. I saw you in California in the locker room with the champagne flying everywhere and the ponchos given out. Does this feel real to you now with these thousands of people all behind us? You know, Gurdeep, it still is surreal. I mean, look at this. The fan base, we've talked about it before, just how great they are all throughout Canada and how special it is. This is just truly remarkable, and uh, it's just wonderful to see it all, right, and to see all the hard work that the players put in, the loyal fan base that they have, and, and then here it is. It gives you goosebumps. It's a little bit surreal. I woke up this morning. And you're thinking like, you know, today's a parade day. And I and I remember day one at Vancouver training camp and, and here we are. 2008, 11 years later for you when you started with the Raptors. You know, when, when the Raptors made the trade for Kawhi Leonard, in the worst case scenario, he could have not liked it here. He could have got hurt. The team could have not gelled under a first year coach. They could have missed the playoffs. In terms of a best case scenario, everything could have come together. Load management. They catch Golden State in the final, perhaps not at 100%, and they win an NBA title. It's not often we get to talk about a best case scenario playing out. Well, when you think back to the moves that Masai Ujiri made last year, uh, he knew, he has said since day one, we will win, we will win. And he made a big deal to bring in Kawhi Leonard because he understood that he's the best two-way player in the world. I think he's shown dur or showed during the course of the 2019 postseason that he's the best player in the world at this stage. And then Nick Nurse, what he was able to do, the addition of Marcus All, the uh, Pascal Siakam, how he grew as a player. Uh, and you think of Kyle Lowry and the journey that he's been on. And then for it to all to come together. And the Raptors playing different styles, Gurdip, throughout the course of this postseason. The shot against Philly, lose the first two against Milwaukee, take the next four, and then you take on Golden State. And you think back, I was talking to Nick Nurse yesterday about the last two games in that series. Two teams that were leaving it all out there for 48 minutes. Both teams with tremendous heart, and the Raptors have come out on top. It gives you goosebumps, right? It does, and I thought both uh, organizations real classy too, Golden State and Toronto. Let me ask you, in your 11-year in your career to this point with the Raptors, what is your all-time Matt Devlin favorite call? It's got to be the shot. Well, you know, look, at the shot is the shot. However, to say Canada, the NBA title is yours uh, after taking care of the Golden State Warriors, that was truly special. Matty D, thanks for doing this. Go have some fun, all right? You got it. Send it back over to you.
what a moment for him also, and a moment for all of these team mayors. Right, right here in, in Nathan Phillips Square, you know, the crowd has been incredibly patient. Some, though, decided to use the arches uh, for a better vantage point, and in a great ultimatum moment, they came up on stage, got on that speaker and said, until all of you idiots get off of those arches, you are not going to see the Raptors, and this per show is not going to get going. So what you're seeing right now are all of those people who climbed those arches now climbing down, hopefully safely. And that is the one thing. The folks of Toronto were so great in the aftermath of the victory. There was only minor damage, barely any arrests, and you don't want to see anybody hurt on a day that is pure celebration. So we continue here from Toronto with the Raptors celebration. Welcome back, Canada. James Duffy and Lisa LaFlamme watching the Raptors championship parade here in Toronto. They're making their way along Lakeshore Boulevard in Toronto, Lakeshore, and then they'll make their way up York and then University Avenue to Nathan Phillips Square where a massive crowd awaits them. If you're just tuning in and expecting them to be here by noon, which was the original plan, that won't happen. <laughs> It was a slow start, and the crowds have just been so massive down here uh, that the parade is, is taking its time and in getting here. Teddy Tong and Takiya Singh spent the night in Nathan Phillips Square. They're from Bardown.com and have been... Hi, everyone. I'm Takiya. What to do, baby? And I'm Teddy. And we're here live at Nathan Phillips Square where it is absolute pandemonium. Man, are the fans here wild. There's a lot of dancing, a lot of excitement, and we cannot wait for their buses to arrive. Yes, every inch of the square is filled with passion, with love, with excitement to see the NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors. It's just fabulous, and we're seeing pipe bands on the streets. We've got fabulous music here in the square. Uh, I know we have no perspective whatsoever on where the parade is. We just know that in 45 minutes from now, it's supposed to be here behind us, James. I don't know. I wouldn't. That's definitely Lakeshore. We know it's on Lakeshore, but it, it's going sign. to be some time. And by the way, if you have if you have friends or family down here and you're having trouble reaching them, you imagine when a couple of million cell phones are trying to operate all within about a, a mile radius of one another and they're just not functioning down here. But the crowd has been extremely well behaved. It's an almost perfect day in Toronto. One of the best days we've had in what has been a ugly spring. About 20, 22 degrees, a beautiful breeze. And that really helps, particularly down here in Nathan Phillips Square where they are shoulder to shoulder. There is not an inch to move. So at least you're not basking in the heat. And it's always such a great concern when you have massive crowds like this in the sunshine with heat stroke and this sort of thing. We can hear that uh, pipe bam now and I think Cam Woolley is very close. Cam. We're at the front of the parade. We're just approaching Spadina now. Look at the crowds. They're even up on the ramps uh, from the Gardner Expressway. We've seen uh, construction workers on high rises partially built lining every floor. Uh, seeing their orange vest, uh, floors and floors up, seeing the uh, workers closing the highway, standing up on the gardener looking down uh, at the parade. People are just having a great time. We're picking up speed a little bit now. When we first left, it was really slow as we came out of the uh, exhibition. The crowds had basically enveloped and surrounded uh, uh, Lake Shore. The police had to walk along and just sort of inch along and get the crowds out of the way. But uh, it's a, it's pretty well organized here now. We're picking up, uh, we picked up speed a bit, and things are going smooth. Uh, families here, everybody's having a super time in the sunshine. This is just <laughs> best parade ever. Back to you. Best parade ever, Cam, and also biggest parade ever in this country. Uh, we don't have any statistics yet, but you can see by these incredible visuals, just an absolute sea of people here to celebrate their team. The Raptors Championship Parade continues here on CTV and TSN. Stay with us.